In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With the concelebrating clergy, I welcome you all, parishioners, visitors, and children to St. Patrick's Cathedral as we begin the Sacred Triduum, the three days in which we commemorate the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death and trusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God's forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, on the 10th day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male, one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two, two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle around your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you and you shall then escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are declare, to declare it as a feast of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Oh, pray. 
precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful, your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. Our blessing Sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Second reading, a reading for the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it, broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory 
It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put into his mind, into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was returning to God. And he got up from the table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment, you do not know what I am doing but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again and went back to the table, do you understand, he said, what I have done to you. You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord.
My dear friends, tonight we have come to celebrate the Holy Triduum, beginning with Maundy Thursday and culminating with Easter Vigil. The commemoration of the Last Supper, together with the ritual of foot washing, is one of the most cherished liturgical actions. Maundy Thursday reminds us of our call to be Christ's body broken and his blood poured out for others. The Eucharist, illustrated by the drama of foot washing, commits us to the upside down and bottom up way of Jesus. Because only by emptying ourselves for the sake of others can we follow his example in trans transforming lives and relationships and thus bringing about God's life flourishing plan for the world. In the first reading taken from the book of Exodus, we hear the description of the Jewish Passover meal. In this ritual, our Jewish forebears celebrate the deliverance from slavery and the call to build a society that they are meant to be. The Passover meal reinforces their commitment to form a covenantal community in which the care of the most marginalized, like the widows, the orphans, the aliens, was to be the essential distinguishing feature. It was a model society that would shine as a light for the nations. At the Last Supper, Jesus transforms the Jewish Passover meal. It is no longer just a celebration of political freedom, a freedom from bondage in Egypt. Jesus anticipates a new kind of exodus by his death and resurrection. He is himself the Passover lamb bringing about a new and a greater exodus, leading us not to an earthly promised land, but to the reign of God, the reign of justice and love. Hence, to participate in the Eucharist is not just to feel good about ourselves, but to make present, to make present Jesus' liberating and transforming power in our lives and relationships, especially with the poor. Jesus demonstrates the ethos of the kingdom in the dramatic gesture of washing of the feet. He subverts worldly notion of greatness, power, and leadership by enacting the role of a servant, a slave. He, he illustrates powerfully to us what it means to be his follower. It is a relational paradigm, or a model of living and being in the world. Rooted in kenosis, or self-giving love, as opposed to self-preservation. In Jesus' kingdom, or a new social ordering, there is no bottom place. The worldly, power, the worldly power structures that favor the top end are superseded by a new relational paradigm that actually privileges the bottom dwellers. So to be a disciple of Jesus is to see and to act from the perspective of the lowly. My dear friends, tonight's celebration highlights for us what it means to be a disciple and what it means to be a body of Christ. We're challenged, challenged to reclaim our identity as Eucharistic people. St. Augustine long ago put it like this, receive what you already are and become fully what you have received. We must become what we consume, that is to be another Christ, to be Eucharistic in our self-giving love, in our reaching out 
and in our embrace and service of all people in the manner that Jesus showed us. St. John Chrysostom shows the link between the Eucharist and love of the poor in this way. He says, if you cannot find Christ in the beggar at the church door, you will not find him in the chalice. Indeed, communion with the poor is the pathway to God. And conversely, communion with God leads us to the suffering body of Christ. Maundy Thursday is also traditionally regarded as the birthday of the ministerial priesthood. Jesus presents a model of ministry that must be reclaimed. We need to go to the drawing board, go back to the drawing board, which is the gospel of service exemplified by Christ's radical inversion of worldly values. If the priesthood has a better future at all, it has to embody Christ's radical example. It has to find expression in better mutual support, collaboration, partnership. It has to free itself from the variant strains of clericalism, such as excessive control, micromanagement, and individualism. We must learn to minister in relationship with one another and with you, with the community of faith. The priesthood in the era of synodality entails a significant degree of vulnerability. So let us pray for the clergy of our diocese, especially as we embark upon the journey that requires a certain letting go of the status quo and embracing mutual empowerment through shared decision-making and governance. The Eucharist commits us, the baptized, to be Christ's transforming presence in the world. For like him, we must suffer with others, be vulnerable with the vulnerable, be last with the least. So let us become more fully what we already are, Christ's body broken for others and his blood poured out for many. Let us embrace Jesus' way of being the transformative force for the world so that it may truly mirror the kingdom of peace, justice for all. May we grow daily into the Eucharistic people who reach out and lead the world to the heart of God. May we model our lives on the one who came so that all may have life and have it in abundance.
Friends, on the night before he died, Jesus the Lord gave us a new example of love when he washed his apostles' feet and instituted the sacraments of the Eucharist. Let us pray through him to the Father for the grace to live like him in full Christian service of others. For the Church, that all our members increase their love and devotion to the Holy Eucharist, the source and summit of Christian life, that their lives may be fruitful in good works. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all people, that the example of Christ, our Saviour, encourage men and women to serve God in their neighbour, even when it is challenging or confronting. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For those in need of material and spiritual help, that in following the new commandment of Jesus Christ, we will not consider any task too menial for us, as we see the person of Christ in the poor and suffering of this world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the Jewish people and for ourselves, that we forgive any wrongs we have committed against each other and come to know the peace and love which our Saviour came to establish on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our For victims of conflict in remote parts of the world. That such people will not be forgotten by us merely because their suffering occurs in the context of conflicts that do not make the headlines. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And for our parish community. That we be a truly prayerful, inclusive, and welcoming family, drawing strength from the Eucharist to care for one another and grow in faith and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Father, we receive all graces through your Son. May we live our lives as it did, in loving service of you, in our neighbour, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As is a traditional on the Holy Thursday, we'll be taking up a pledge now for the poor and disadvantaged, both uh, in, in our parish and beyond. Uh, so uh, I'll take a big pledge now, and uh, the uh, Father of the Grace this evening will be used uh, for organisations such as Spins of the Poor, as I said, to assist the poor and the needy. So please do.
Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, according to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. So Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, 
and to accept them as one of us who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant table, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through all you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and restore them upon us. under the sign of
Please stand as we conclude. Let us pray. Grand Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Right now we have the transfer of the Eucharist followed by adoration and uh, Tomorrow is Good Friday, so a gentle reminder of the day of uh, fasting, abstinence and prayer. We have stations of the cross at 10 and then 3 p.m. the liturgy of the Passion of our Lord. Please also keep our young people, there are over 800 registered for the pilgrimage walk. Uh, from St. Pat's in Blacktown to here, the cathedral. So pray for their safety and their spiritual renewal. Oh.
Corona.